And we're back. Some more oxygen not included. And our little, little duplicates are getting along just fine. Our training is almost complete for a few of these, actually. But there is a bunch of stuff we got want to get done today. Uh, namely, we want to set up a few volcano tamers. I'm thinking we definitely want to get the iron and the aluminum ones done because they'd be really useful materials to have long term. Uh, as well as that, we want to get a frozen food storage set up. Not exactly sure how I'm going to do that, but we'll wing it. We'll probably put in the, uh, the whatever the cooling thing is under a steam turbine somewhere over here. This is going to get extended uh, dramatically, I'd say, to help with that. Uh, then we're going to want to put down some water weed seeds so we can go into mushrooms. And then we're going to want to go into geothermal power. But first, there is a lot of things to take care of. Lots of little side projects that have been recommended. Uh, first, let's start with toilets. And the thing is, duplicates toilet speed is actually determined by not just the toilets, but by lighting. So if we were to, say, put a little bit of lighting around everywhere, like, say, there and there and there. Actually, let me make that a little bit neater. There. Much neater. So that will mean they'll be able to use the bathrooms and sinks faster. It saves us a little bit of time. This is not a high priority thing, but considering how much, well, how little it costs you to do, it's one of those things that you probably should have thought of if the comments had to mention to me and said, uh, hey, Francis, you forgot this again which I do quite consistently. Also, we can do the same thing with the metal refineries down here. Let's uh, stick a quick wire in there. Boom. So that will give lighting to this area so they'll actually work it faster. In fact, we should do the same down here and probably over here as well. So now when people use the metal refineries, they'll do it 10, 15% faster, which means it actually requires less power. The power draw only is active while the duplicate's there. So it actually saves us a little bit of power and it means we generate more out of the machine because it just works that little bit faster, which means we still get the same amount of power out of it for less draw. Okay, that's two things done. And what was the other one? Ah, it's an alarm for the oxygen tank was a good suggestion. Now, over here, you see, we have this liquid tank. This is our liquid reservoir, which is fed off of our desalinator. So our desalinator puts the water in here. However, what if there was a problem somewhere? What if we stopped pumping water or the desalinator shut off and we didn't notice and water started to go down? Well, we've got this backup tank. How about we hook up a quick alarm to this so that if the water starts to drop below, say, four tons, we get a notification so we can be advised, hey, you got four tons of water left. You should probably fix whatever caused it to go that low. Took me a minute or two to wrap my head around this one. Ugh, automation still gets to me even after all this time. All right, here's how this works. When this thing reaches its high threshold, it starts sending a red signal. And once it hits its low threshold, which we've set to 80%, it'll send a green signal. All that means is once this thing is full, it's just going to keep sending out a red signal until it goes below 80% fullness. Once it goes below 80% fullness, it sends out a green signal and will stay green until it goes back up to 100%. That means if we just set an alarm here, say, ooh, uh, low O2 water. And we'll make that a bing bong. No. No. That's much better. We'll give you a pause and a zoom. Perfect. That means if this goes below 80%, it will pause the game, zoom in in this location, go... And we'll know that, yes, we should probably fix that water tank. Okay, then. That, uh, that wasn't entirely necessary. So long as you're confident that you're not going to mess up your water, you don't have to do something like this. But uh, it's just it's one of those nice little... Quality of life things that makes you feel a little less stressed out sometimes. Now, another thing was this desalinator. Desalinators can actually work submerged. So there was a suggestion that we should get this desalinator and put it down here in this water, meaning that water would eat its own heat type of thing. However, I like to keep things like this, like desalinators that uh, provide, well, O2, inside our base behind our atmosuit docks. Everything you have that's beyond your atmosuit docks that you need to live can become a problem. If your atmosuit docks break down, then you can't get outside. And you might have put those in a nasty area that's full of nasty gases or heat or something like that. So things like desalinators and water sieves and oxygen production, all that, I kind of like to keep that behind the gates, at least until later in the game. Just to make sure that if anything does go wrong, we can service the parts. But that's why this is here. Oh, and there was a suggestion that we should grab a water sieve. And let's see, we're going to put a water sieve right... Uh, you know what? We'll put it right here. Never mind. This was a terrible location. There was already a power wire going through here. And uh, we like to keep our water sieves and our desalinators that feed our oxygen all on the same power grid that's being fed by the actual self-powered oxygen maker. If it's not on that, it's not self-powered. Now, is it? Yeah, so what we've done here is we are running the salt water through the water sieve first, the polluted water sieve first, and then we're running it through the desalinator. Yeah, it, it turns out you can just run these one way or the other, as in polluted water goes through the desalinator without damaging it, and salt water goes through a water sieve without damaging it. Nope. Haven't checked the polluted water through a desalinator myself in a while, so, uh, yeah, uh, maybe test that yourself before you put it to the test, uh, in a 
active build. Now, this means that if any polluted water gets into our feed line, it shouldn't cause any problems. So polluted water, clean water, and salt water should all be able to go through here and come into the system because, well, we're using one of these weirdo uh, hydra designs that, you know, requires specific gases. And if we put in the wrong blob of liquid in here, it's going to pop out and cause huge problems. So I'm a little bit paranoid about that. So this, this makes me feel just that little bit more comfy. Oh. And we don't have to worry about power drain. If you check under energy usage here, you can see under power consumers, there's the water sieve and the desalinator. And why is there two water sieves? Did I? I thought I disconnected this one. Never mind, that is deconstructed now. And we can check down here under power draw. You'll see the desalinator. Yep, it's drawing 480 watts every time it actually sieves some water or cleans the water, changes it to clean water. Desalinates the water, actually. And the water sieve, nothing. No matter how much of that salt water goes through it, it doesn't care. It doesn't actually cost you any power. It only costs you power if it's sieving polluted water. So, that doesn't cost us any energy and gives us an extra little layer of redundancy. On top of that, I, uh, I move the gas pipes over a little bit as well, just to cool down the entire area, just to be 100% safe. Done. All right, what was next up in the agenda? Oh, yes, research complete things. Yeah, I really should clear those. I know that's been driving some people nuts, but, uh, uh never mind. Right, uh, when it comes to doing the research, I keep forgetting to come in here and queue up new things. So because there's no queue research thing going on, we're just going to click on cryofuel propulsion. That will queue up lots of research. And now we don't have to worry about coming in back in here and researching things anytime soon. Oh, though I will need to add on space research at some point. You know what? We'll worry about that later. Hey, what do we got out of the printing pod? Um, yeah, we'll grab a pufflet. Why not? You can go be trapped inside that room forever and ever and ever. Or maybe we'll just turn you into meat. Now, one last thing from the last episode before we move on to the volcano dermers. Uh, people were concerned about this uh, oh, liquid pipe thermal sensor being here because it's too far away from the aqua tuner. They're worried that, say, a blob of liquid might go through here that is, oh, say, really cold, like, you know, minus 10. Uh, but the next blob after it is 20 C. So this means it turns on the aqua tuner when the, the freeze, almost freezing blob of water goes through and accidentally freezes the water in the aqua tuner can't really happen. So long as we keep this reservoir full of about a ton of water, actually less, a few hundred kilos should be fine. That shouldn't ever be possible because the water keeps getting its temperature equalized. This can maybe go up and down by a couple of degrees off of what we actually set here, but it's almost impossible for this to break. That's why we're comfortable putting this so far away from the aqua tuner. We could move this like five, six tiles back and it'd still be fine. You can also do it in reverse, and we might actually do that later on just to demonstrate it. We could actually have it where the aqua tuner freeds into a liquid tank, which then has a liquid pipe thermal sensor set to it. It would... You know what? We'll, we'll do that later. For now, for now it's time to do a volcano tamer, and I think the first one to start on would be... Actually, aluminum. Aluminum is all the way down the bottom here, and this is a material we don't actually have naturally on this map, so getting our hands on it would give us some options. Hmm, give me a minute here. I think the plan here is going to be a passive volcano tamer. We're just going to use some steam turbines, a little bit of passive cooling on them, and we're going to use them to tame this. Problem is, vo aluminum volcanoes produce a lot of heat. It's actually more than iron volcanoes, almost 50% more. So we're going to need about three steam turbines strapped on top of this thing with passive cooling to make it work. Well, let's hope it works. We'll, we'll set it up and then we'll leave it. And if it doesn't end up in a fiery ball of death, we'll be we'll just assume it's a success. Oh, it would be really nice to have more labor about now, wouldn't it? Uh, let's actually take care of that. We have a bunch of duplicates who look like they could get out of here, I think, by now. Uh, let's see. We have... Ah, uh, Lacarius is actually up to three points, and Matthew's up to four. Oh, I should have let both of you out already. So Lacarius and, Ma and uh, Matthew both need to go get skill scrubbed again. And as well as that, we need to make sure they can leave but not get back in. Lacarius, Matthew, perfect. Now, the reason we want to skill scrub them is they're currently, well, they're, they're trained up in science, which is not their primary. Actually, oh, Lacarius is going to become a scientist anyway. Let me check my notes. Ah, actually... No, we'll still scrub them. I want to actually have a few points free. And when I say notes, I, I think that some people are imagining that they're more complicated than they really are. No, it's just literally a notepad with some random notes on this that kind of keeps me half focused on what I'm supposed to be doing next. Just about. Two freshly scrubbed dupes ready to be assigned out. All right. What was it we were going to do with you, Lacarius? You were going to be science and suit wearing. Well, I think suit wearing is going to be your primary for now. And for science... I believe our other scientist has maxed out applied, so you are going to go down data analysis. Perfect. Then, done. 
Now we'll have to assign them out so that they can leave the base. Oh, should probably cover that. Uh, to leave the base, they can go through here. Done. Now they can exit in and out. We might want to extend those atmosphere docks in a bit. Uh, we're getting to the point where we actually have enough people that it might become a problem when you're having this many docks. Oh, and second duplicant, Matthew here, is going to be a digger. So, we shall put you straight down that path. Uh, improved carrying, and then... Boom. Now you are very useful to us. You will get super duper hard digging hat. Oh, if you hover over them, you can see their athletics are 23. Uh, the carrier's athletics is 24. Our duplicates that are still in training, athletics of 17 and athletics of 19. Most of them come out with an athletics of 19 or 20. Combined with being able to just straight away put on exosuit training means they're all useful duplicates now. They're just uh, so much better. Now I just have to change their priorities. Matthew becomes primarily a digger and everything else sort of... Well, Digging and building, everything else, they'll figure it out as so long as they're close by. And Lacarius, primarily a researcher, and we downgrade digging and building so they stay close to anything that needs doing. And done. That's two more people who are actually fully skilled up. Now, you don't necessarily need to make sure everyone's a good gym rat so that they can go out and uh, do all their jobs. However, we are going to be going all the way down here and doing a construction project that's very far away from our core base. If we had weak athletic dupes... They just wouldn't be able to handle this, or if they didn't have the skills, it wouldn't be possible. So we're doing this so that we can do all of these chores everywhere. If you're only going to be operating closer to your base, you don't need to do a gym, and you can skill up your dupes normally. Like, you could, say, work on a volcano tamer over here, like this copper one. It's nice and close. There'd be no need to really leave or get your dupes uh, too skilled up. But since we want to build stuff everywhere on the map with ease, we've got everyone the skills they need. Okay, let's start our first volcano tamer of the episode. If you've never seen a very basic volcano tamer before, the general plan is you strap some steam turbines on top. Then what you do is you use the output of the steam turbines to cool the steam turbines down. Which sounds like black magic. Kinda is in a way. But it works. And it's sort of a... Uh, it's not too unbalanced, but it's balanced enough that it should work fine long term. And it requires the least amount of investment. Otherwise, what you have to start doing is putting in aqua tuners to cool down the steam turbines, and things get far more complicated. And oh my god, uh, you deconstruct the buildings you're standing on, if you wouldn't mind. Yes, uh, just uh, deconstruct that. There you go. Go grab some lunch. Every time. Now I know there is a lot that looks like it's going on here, but don't worry, it's not. It's not that bad. It's just uh, oh. Jeez, yeah, when you try and go back and explain the dumb stuff you have to do in Oxygen to get stuff to work. Okay. Uh, first, in here, this uh, this room here is going to be sealed off. We're going to put in a double liquid lock here. We'll get back to reasons on that. But this room here is going to be sealed off, so we're going to rip out all of the gases. All the gases in here need to come out. So to get all the gases out, we need to seal this place off, so we're putting in some crude oil. Crude oil won't have any problems with high temperatures. If we try to seal this off with water, we're going to have issues because this room is going to go above 100 degrees. And this stuff doesn't vaporize until it hits 400, so it's plenty good. I mean... You don't, it could potentially go a lot higher because this uh, volcano erupts at about 1,700 degrees Celsius, which is hot, but we're going to chuck in a lot of water in here. The water will act as a, a good moderator to keep things reasonable. Now, we're going to hook that up there. That's put down to some jerry-rigged just uh, coal generators that we chucked down. That's going to start ripping all the gases out of here. We want to make sure there's no gases in here to mess up the steam turbines that we're going to strap on top. Uh, by that same token, we're going to rip out the gases up here in the steam turbine area so that it's all nice and uh, consistent as well. Though, there we're also going to want to put down a little bit of a liquid lock. It's technically... oh... Technically a sort of liquid lock. We're going to put a blob of liquid there and it should stop all the gases from escaping. And it'll put a layer of oil down on the ground here, which we won't need. Hmm. You know what? Let's just keep this moving along. We'll finish the liquid locks. We'll finish this, and we're going to suck all the gases out of here, all the gases out of here, and then we're going to fill this room with a bit of water. About, I think, four tons should be sufficient. I just realized getting the water down here is going to be painful, so instead, how about we carry it the old-fashioned way? As ice. So we need, what, about four tons? Uh, let me do some math here. Five by 800 kilos should give us four tons of water down here. Um... Mm. They're not going to be touching anything, are they? You know what? We'll just get one of them right there. Right, you. Uh, never mind. This is probably going to mess things up a bit. Well, we can cancel that then. Yeah, the moment the ice got put in there, it immediately exchanged temperature and then melted. Ah, wonderful. Also, people are 
Yeah, some of our narcoleptics are definitely going to start dropping water in places they shouldn't or ice. I should have thought about this a little bit more carefully. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, probably. Oh, gases wise, you can see this place has been mostly vacuumed out. There's a little bit of carbon dioxide left, but that will be gone shortly. Uh, that's one 800 blo kilo blob. Two 800 kilo blobs. Three 800 kilo. <laughs> Did we lose some of the mass when those things melt? Well, that went very well. We've got about four tons of water in here, though I am going to put in a little bit more. These volcanoes have a thing to them that's not incredibly obvious. If it goes above 150 kilos of gas pressure or liquid pressure around their, their output tile, they stop working. So if we have more than 150 kilos of gas pressure in here, this thing's going to have issues. So at four tons of water, and this thing's about 48 tiles, I believe. And maybe, yeah, 48 plus four tiles or whatever. So that works out at about 83 kilos per tile. So we're going to stick in just, and oh my god, seriously. Did that just... Yeah, that just... It never finished. Fine, that's uh, 4.8 tons. We got about 4.8 tons of water. That should be sufficient. Perfect. Then what we can do here is... that blobs of oil, Those blobs of oil have gone down there. And that blob of oil has basically made a, a liquid lock. So if we hook this up here, we can start ripping all the gases out. We're going to fill it full of some oxygen. Why not? Uh, this shouldn't take too long as well. All the gas is getting dumped out over there. Then once we fill this with about two kilos of oxygen pressure, we'll finish off. In fact, we can start doing some deconstructions in here. We can deconstruct those. You can all go. How's our liquid locks looking? You are... Ooh. That one, I think we could go one more bottle in you and... Actually, you're both done. You finished. You sweep only. You may be wondering why this airflow tile is here. Uh, that airflow tile means that there can be no temperature transfer between here and here. Well, not yet. One second. We can hook that up there. We're going to turn this area into a vacuum. And because there will be a vacuum in this location, there could be no temperature exchange. Vacuum is a perfect insulator. It's always the perfect insulator. So this is an airflow tile. So because if we fill to rip out all the gases that are in here, then this literally all becomes an airflow tile. And even though that's metal and should theoretically conduct heat, it's it's classified as a vacuum, meaning no temperature can transfer from here to here, meaning no other temperature can escape out of this room. This is one of those, uh, I mean, you could just use an insulated tile. Honestly, most people just use an insulated tile. But this is just going that extra bit above and beyond. It's not necessary. It's just uh, something you do because you're like, eh, why not? All right, uh, gas pipe, you can go. We can start deconstructing some of this junk. Uh, we will not be able to get to that section. The reason we can't get to it is, well, that granite block is in the way. And we don't want to take that down just yet because that will activate the volcano. And we don't want that volcano going off just at this moment. And do we already have a vacuum? Yes, we do. In that case, we shall hook that guy up there. And we can disconnect both of these gas pumps. Then we can start pressurizing this area where we're going to put it in our steam turbines. Ooh, we are actually disturbingly close to getting this thing ready to go. It's beautiful. 1.8 kilos of oxygen pressure all the way through right there, and we didn't have to do anything too complicated to get it going on. Just an oxygen diffuser, some algae, done. Okay, once this is ripped out, we are going to start putting in the power, which is going to be steam turbines. Uh, we would like to make sure they're pretty conductive, so I think... Ooh, gold is probably... Gold or steel would be the best, but gold we have plenty of, so let's try going with gold for now. Three steam turbines all the way across there. Now... Here is where the black magic bit starts. We're going to get this radiant pipe and we're going to run it out of the steam turbine and all the way across and down like so. And then we're going to run it down in an insulated pipe, the last leg of the journey. Uh, we don't need ceramic, do we? Nah. We'll just use regular. Actually, we'll use we'll use a little bit of ceramic here just to be 100% safe. It's not really necessary, but since we've got it on hand, we might as well. And then we'll go with a little bit of igneous rock for the last bit. Right, igneous rock piping for the last bit. And you can go down there, and for the vents at the end, we'll just make it an iron ore. We're going to need something with a pretty high temperature. And no one can get in there to do that last one, but that is okay. Then we'll just let those build real quick. Oh, and power-wise, we've got a power cord going across here, and we're going to put in a little oh, vacuum seal joint plate at the end here. We're not going to be able to utilize this power just yet, namely because it's too far in the middle of nowhere, plus it's going to take a while before this even spins up. But eventually, we probably will utilize some of the power this volcano, volcano generates. Then we're going to seal this area off. This is going to get very hot in here. About 95 C hot. Well, 95 to 100 degrees hot. 
However, we do want to put in a power joint plate. So, leaves us with a bit of a problem. How do we get the power out without letting the heat out? Especially considering you can't really use any of those uh, hoppy bridges with these kind of power wires. These heavy watt wires, there's no conductive wire bridges for these. So, we default back to this junk. We're basically going to use a sort of a little vacuum seal that we came up with ages ago. What we've done here is we've just stuck in a mini gas pump. Uh, then what we're going to do is stick in, say, a power... Yeah, heavy watt joint plate right there. We can't actually put the heavy watt joint plate on top of the uh, the mini gas pump. The reason being there's actually a power connector right there. So because of that, we're going to get this heavy watt wire connected straight through there. And that means that when power starts going through here, the power will activate the gas pump, and the gas pump will start pumping the gas out of this sector. Ooh, actually, we'll leave you for one second. So that should drain this entire sector, which means all of the gases will be gone, meaning that heat can't transfer from here out into the rest. It'll make a little bit more sense once we get a little bit further into it. So, to uh, sort of demonstrate what I mean here, I've hooked this up to the coal generators we had installed down here. And you see, once we put power onto this, the gas pump kicks in and... Oh, actually, there wasn't a lot of gas in there. Well, it's completely stripped out all the gases that were in this section. Now, this is going to sit here and have that annoying, uh, not in gas thing going on, but I, I don't really care. That'll be grand. And that means that there's a vacuum seal between here and here, meaning no temperature can transfer between these two sections. And I just make sure that this place is nice and perfectly insulated. And as well as that, we can take out any power that this generates and feed it onto our main grid. You do have another option. You could just hook this uh, two kilowatt wire across here, one of these regular ones. It won't be able to handle exactly all of the power that could potentially be used here, but honestly, we're not going to get above 2 kilowatts anyway, and you can hook that 2 kilowatt wire up to transformers. There's all sorts of stuff you could do that way, but I just prefer this way because it's more of a plug-and-play thing for later on, and I don't have to think about it too hard. You know, sometimes it's a question of convenience over efficiency. Just If it's more convenient sometimes, it's just more efficient to do it that way, because you don't have to do as much effort for it. All right, uh, this, you... We're going to get rid of this here. We don't need this power wire here. That was just put in temporarily to uh, power that gas pump. Though, honestly, you don't need to power that gas pump. Unless this place is boiling hot and you're worried about overheating your gas pump really early. Oh, and you. We want to analyze you immediately. You're currently dormant, but we would like to see when you're going to come back online. And we can do a little bit of maintenance here and get rid of this stuff and clean this whole area. It's going to take Boydra a bit of time to actually analyze all of that stuff, but yeah, we'll figure out what's going on later. Ooh, intervals. What do we got? Give me... Ooh, steel. Yeah, we'll take the steel. Or two tons of copper. Nope, nope. Steel. Steel. Okay. Now, maybe a slight detour. Uh, yeah, I want to see what's going on over here. We need to knock on the door of this shipping container. So let's go chop our way in and introduce, introduce ourselves to our neighbors. And what is that clear water doing there? You know what? That water can fall out. We don't care about it. Right, we've triggered the knock. Uh, someone should be along shortly to do so. Matthew, wait. Seriously, guys, let's, let's make that a priority seven. Reity is on their way. That's not how you knock. What? Deliver food to the mailbox, improve nearby decor, and turn on the festive lights. Okay, we have to deliver food to the mailbox. Right, select an object to display here. Okay, hermit recruitment process. Initial contact was a success. Our new neighbor seems friendly, though extremely shy. They need a little more coaxing before they're ready to join my colony. Okie dokie. Uh, deliver food to mailbox, improve ne nearby decor, and turn on festive lights. Turn on festive lights, I think we can manage pretty handily. All we need is power, right? 60 watts. Well, we've got lots of coal. Um, hmm. Okay, okay, I think I can hang this. We hover over welcome to dinner. Deliver three unique food items. Quality must be great, plus four, or higher. That's going to be difficult. I don't think we actually have any of those just yet. And I think all of them require us to get our hands on the gas grill. Do we have the gas grill? Yes, we already have the gas grill. Oh, that means we're going to have to get our hands on natural gas. Do we even have a natural gas vent on this map? Oh, okay, that could get interesting. Uh, improve nearby decor. That has to go up to 120 and connect the building up to enough power. Hmm. If we don't have natural gas, there's no point doing any of the others. So let me have a check here. Right, I can't see a natural gas geyser vent on our map, but I could be missing it. We have so many vents and geysers. 
However, we can get our hands on it with... Oop, by basically just oil. We can turn oil into... refine oil into petroleum and it'll give us a little bit of natural gas. Enough to run it for the four meals we need. So we've actually got enough of it right here, we should be fine. However, I think first off, we might want to set up some cooling. I would like to have a more permanent food storage solution. Uh, right now, we're occasionally letting food rot because, well, it just sort of rots because we don't have enough... Well, we can't keep it perfectly fresh. So I'm thinking we're going to extend on this steam room quite a bit. And then we're going to use a thermal... Mm. Yeah, we're going to use that gas cooling machine to cool down an area over here. This is going to be messy, though, no matter what way we, we wrangle this. What we're going to do here is we're going to extend the steam room on. We can basically clamp down one, two, three, four, five. We can put five more steam turbines on, stop on top of here, which gives us seven in total, which should allow us to eat all the heat of this volcano down here. But this is all future planning stuff, so we're just getting a little bit of the prep work done. But we're going to need some space over here because we want to put in a thermal regulator so that we can do some cooling. Might move the kitchen down here. I'm thinking we put the kitchen directly across. That allows us to do the cooling nice and close by, and we get to renovate our kitchens. All in one smooth, uh, semi-smooth push. We just got to make sure this prep work here is done for when we decide to exp Well, when we decide we're going to need a whole bunch more refinement, cooling, all that stuff. Let's just make sure we get in all of our piping for when we put in more refineries, and we're also going to have to put igneous rock tiles all the way across the bottom as well, but this shouldn't take too long. Then, as we did with this section, we're just going to pour in a bunch of salt water, push all the gases out. Uh, oh, there's polluted oxygen in there. Oh, don't be like that. Why has there got to be polluted oxygen there? Okay, we'll, we'll chuck in, well, we're going to be definitely chucking in more water. But we're going to keep chucking that in until hopefully the polluted oxygen goes away. Otherwise, we'll have to break in there and build a tile in that location to force it out. Come on, just move. Don't be like that. I think that's just about enough salt water. Now let's, uh... Put a clean layer on top, force out the last of the gases and be done with it. Though, yeah, there's there's far too much gases in there, isn't there? You know what? It's fine, and how did you guys drop that bottle there? Stop that! Stop dropping bottles! Yep. Yeah. We'll sweep it up. Okay, gas pressure-wise. Come on! Push it all the way out. This might take a minute because there's too many gases moving around down here. Ugh, I don't have to start putting down airflow tiles. Yeah, they'll, they'll eventually push it out. It'll just take a few minutes. There, we have the steam room sort of extended on. Now all we have to do is break down this wall and let this water start, well, getting boiled. That might be a little tricky, but I have an idea. So what we'll do is we'll deconstruct that. Hmm. This is going to be messy no matter what we do, isn't it? So... sort of done? Right, uh, go in and grab that. They should be able to hop in here, go across the top, and make it inside this soon-to-be steam room. Which means... come on, someone go in and grab those. Perfect. In that case, why don't you get rid of that insulated tile and that insulated tile. And then before this water boils, we should be able to seal this off again. At least for a bit. We're going to definitely be connecting this through in the end, but I don't want... See, the problem is, if we just connected these the way we want to right now, it would expose this crude oil to the water and the water to the crude oil and then there can be some weird interactions that could force this oil out of here or cause some sort of horrific messes. We want to avoid that. Also, I just realized I never vacuumed out this area. So let's stick in a quick gas pump here. Uh, you can go there. We'll give you a high pressure gas vent and we need to find power from somewhere. After putting a lot of iron and steel through here, we've uh, started to drag up the temperature. Like, there was several hundred kilos, or, okay, there was several tons of salt water in there. Now it's sort of all been sliding over to this side. Oh my god, it's... we're up to 600 kilos. It's just sort of coming across here, and as this gets processed, uh, the boiling hot petroleum is turning all this stuff to steam. If there is... Okay, there's still about 40 kilos of salt water there, but as we go more and more right, it's getting lower and lower levels. Or, okay. It's slowly getting pushed down this end and getting turned into steam as we go. Hopefully it doesn't jam the steam vents. Actually, it won't make a difference if it jams the steam vents. If it's jamming the steam vents, that means it's not all turned to steam at that point, and we don't have to worry because it won't be hot enough. Alright. Once that is done, we can start on the kitchen. Now I need to come up with a quick kitchen design. 
No, first, eh, we'll grab some rust. Yeah, we're not really going to be getting any new duplicates. Not until we get that person out of their shipping container, which is going to require a new kitchen. Hmm. Let me see. Somewhere about here, I think. This is going to take me a while to figure out, but this has actually finished. All the steam has slowly but surely broken its way here to the end. This took a few cycles, but... Oh, and I turned off the steam turbines. It will actually enable those buildings now. What we want to do here, though, is dump some of that heat into the oil. We want to be able to break in here and do some maintenance on this area. So let's get a utility thing in and make a temp shift plate. Hmm. Can we deconstruct that block from there? If we could deconstruct that block from inside here. And it looks like we can. We'll grab a utility thing in here and we will grab, say, just granite. Granite temperature shift plate. We'll be dumping a little bit of heat into the surrounding instead of tiles, but we don't really care. What we're trying to do here is heat up this crude oil until it's above 100C. We don't want the crude oil causing any of this stuff to flash into water when it touches it. And this way, we're going to start siphoning heat out of this section. Done, and... Ah, yeah, you can see there, the temperature's going up rapidly. 70, 71, 72, yeah, but it is causing this stuff to turn back into water. And that's fine. We'll leave that there for a bit until the temperature equalizes out and that gets above 100 degrees. That way we don't have to worry about any of that water pouring in there and causing this whole thing to break. After digging out until we touch this tiles and doing a little bit of back and forth, we finally got to the point we want it. Uh, you can go there, you can go there. Uh, this is 109 degrees, which means this steam should not cause any problems at all. The two of them should be able to intermingle with the crude oil and there'll be no breakages. That's the hope. Perfect. Perfection. Right. Now we have access to this room and we can make modifications as we need. This is very handy. It means we can dump in extra stuff here, service the aqua tuner, make some changes to piping and all that stuff as we need it. And yeah, we'll just plug that up like that. It was just that. It was causing a little bit of a weird temperature gradient. It wasn't quite as even all the way along. Done. Okie doke. Now. Yes, yes, yes. Kitchen. Oh. <sighs> Somehow I've already gone beyond 30 minutes. How is that even possible? I feel like we only just got started. I suppose the, yeah, that volcano tamer was a little bit of a, a project. Wait, the, I, I think I'm going to cut out the other taming of the other two volcano tamers. Uh, the copper one and the two iron ones. There's two iron volcanoes right here. I don't think you need to see those. They're basically just going to be smaller versions of that one. The iron ones only need two steam turbines and the copper... It requires two as well, though it could be one. I'll have to double check my numbers on that one and my tutorials. Oh, there is one project we can take care of, though. Oh, I'm, and I'm definitely going to have to go for the new method of food storage. I'm looking at my older ones, and my older methods of, methods of food storage didn't fit within a nice four-tile high block thing, so I want to see if I can maybe improve that. I want to have it so that the duplicates can access the food, the frozen food, without having to step through any liquids, because we don't want to get any debuffs from that, while also being able to go in and actually access it when they need it. Um, hmm, I'm not sure exactly I'm going to manage that, but over here, this liquid tank, it's made of copper ore, which is a problem, because it's now gone to 71.4C, and once it hits 75, it's going to start overheating and taking damage. So we're going to put in, oh, no, we're not going to put in another copper one, we're going to put in a steel one, just in case things go above the 75C mark, and as well as that, why, oh, yeah, these things here are made of radiant pipes. I am going to make that insulated pipes now, just so that it keeps its heat until it gets up to the ice biome. These were originally made radiant so that we could counterflow the cold, polluted water that was coming in against them. Once we stopped using cold, polluted water, we probably should have switched those out for insulated tiles. My bad. All right, once this is plugged in, we're going to have to switch over a few things, including the automation. The automation is going to have to be moved over here. There we go. Right, that'll move all the clean water over into that tank. Now, right now, the settings on this are the exact same as the settings on this. 100 high, low threshold, 80. And if we check the automation, you'll see this one here is currently green because there's not enough in there. And this one here should shortly, actually, somewhere in around 50 kilos. Done. And we got our low O2 water warning and we got jumped straight to this location. We can uh, ignore that for now. Let's get rid of our automation tool and sever that line. Done. Once all of this water has filled up this tank, we can connect those automation wires and we'll be back to where we started, but with an actual steel water tank that we're less likely to overheat. Done. Everything moved over. And then this, once this hits about 5,000 kilos, this should switch from green to red. Then we hook that up. Done. Okay, I thought we'd have a quick look at one other thing before we go. This 
ugly looking abomination here is the first volcano tamer I ever made ever. This, this was like one of the first designs I put up as a tutorial on YouTube. Oh, wow, it's so bad. But OK, like to give myself some past credit, uh, back then steam turbines are a bit different. You'll notice this thing looks very bizarre. It would actually feed steam in the bottom and then the steam would come out the top cooler. So you then had to somehow get the steam from the top back down to the bottom, which was not easy. <laughs> yeah, th there was some weird things involving liquid blobs to make that. Never mind. That's not important. What is important is this thing is like the game has come so far from back in the day. Like with the steam turbine setup. This thing could handle a volcano, and at the time, that was, like, huge. To actually have something that could handle a volcano and you could stick it on any volcano and it worked was actually kind of nice. There was no real decent ones at the time. And even though this is incredibly overcomplicated with way too much automation and all that, it's like, you know, slow, gradual, incremental improvements until we get to the point where we're just strapping a few steam turbines on top of them now and we're done. It's kind of crazy how far it's come. Oh, and for perspective, this was made in January 17th, 2019. So this is four years old. How is that? Time flies. Wow. Yep. Video still exists. But anyway, the uh, how this works is those uh, two doors there, basically the gold would flow over the edge, land on those doors. Those doors would get cooled down by the steam room on the right of it. And then once they were cool enough, they would drop down to the next level. Then they would drop down into the water. And then they would get cooled down in the water until they hit, you know, livable temperatures and the duplicates could pick them up. This wasn't even a test map. This was a live volcano tamer from an actual map I was on, and as you can see, it's still filthy and covered in junk, so you know, things really changed. Ah, good times. Look, they don't even have the radiation symbols up in the top right, so there's no radiation and a bunch of the other stuff hadn't been introduced yet. So many mechanics that didn't even exist. So I suppose if you're ever feeling bad about any of your designs, just remember, all the designs suck when you first start them out. The only reason we've gotten better is over years and years of progress, we've all incrementally learned from each other a tiny little bit at a time and gotten better, so that monstrosities like this don't get built, and instead we build them, like, smaller, neater, more efficiently. Anyway, I'm gonna cut this out here. I, uh, hope you enjoyed, and good luck.